As always, as we begin our worship time, I invite you to breathe in deeply and exhale completely. Take this time to prepare yourself. Take these moments of, of quiet on the in-between to feel the Spirit's presence. Breathe in deeply. Exhale completely. Breathe in deeply, exhale completely. on the mantle.
Good morning and welcome to worship with us on this beautiful sunny Sunday morning here in Longview. I hope you all are keeping safe and uh, keeping sane during this time. I am so thankful and excited that you are all here and I am just very quickly going to get my uh, PowerPoint thing working the way I need it to so we can begin. One thing to note, everything you need for worship today will be on your screen and it might be a um, song for you to sing with us or it might be uh, being able to read along with us in our prayers, whatever it might be. We hope that you will join us and fully participate in worship with us today because we are so grateful you are here. If you do choose to commune with us today, we invite you to take some time maybe during our next song to get your communion elements ready. So your bread and your wine or juice, we invite you to, to join us in communion with all of the body of Christ today. And it's looking like my slideshow is not wanting to share. So let me try this one more time. There it is. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those in your home with you. If you would like, if you're on our Facebook or our uh, YouTube, I invite you to share a sign of peace there as well. You are also invited to, if you're on the Zoom call, to do a peace sign. You could even take a quick minute to text one of our other church members and say, hey, peace be with you, I'm at church right now. Uh, just take a moment to share, to experience, to be in Christ's peace. Thank you. 
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus's wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the font here at the church, for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Our first reading for today is from Acts chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of the Aragopus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each, of a, each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead our next reading is from psalm 66 8 through 20. bless our god you peoples let the sound of praise be heard our god has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip for you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I called out to, lo to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. The end of the psalm. Our last reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer from doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for, good, for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer from doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, 
in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel today is from John chapter 14. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, um, this is probably one of my favorite texts from John, but also one that I've always found a little bit confusing. So where we're at in the gospel story is in, we're continuing in Jesus's final discourse, his final conversations with his disciples. This is a continuation from previous weeks, and I'm so grateful for Pastor Chelsea's message last week about the, the difficulties in waiting during this time and the way the disciples waited and were waiting for Jesus. And today in our reading from John, this is probably one of my favorites because it's where we really start getting into the Holy Spirit, but it's also a space where Jesus is giving comfort and hope to his disciples because they don't quite know what's coming yet. They're confused by this long conversation about Jesus leaving them and where Jesus might be going and they're also worried and afraid and in need of this comfort and this peace and this hope and so in this conversation Jesus tells them you will not be alone you will not be left orphaned you will not be by yourselves the Spirit, the Advocate, will be with you. And also, Jesus will be with you. That Jesus says, I am going to be in you and with you and through you, and you will be in me. And there is this kind of confusing Russian nesting doll imagery of the Father is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. And when I was looking at... Um, past years when I've preached on this text, I always kind of find myself in these sort of confusion places around um, what exactly is going on here in Jesus's discourse. But this year, all of it just clicked, and partly because of my daughter Hadley, because it just clicked for her um, a couple of months ago, actually. In December of 2019, uh, we lost our dog Hiccup. Uh, the dog that I got when I was 21 and had lived alongside me as my companion through so much. And she had um, gotten very ill and it was finally at the point where she was in so much pain that the vet asked us to really deeply consider um, putting her down, which was the hardest decision um, I had to make this last, oh yeah, the hardest decision I've made in a long time. And um so I called Greg and I'm bawling and I'm like cuddling Hiccup and I call him and I say, bring Hadley. I don't want her to be left out of this. And at the time she's you know, not even free yet. So Greg and Hadley come in and the whole time Hiccup has been laying there crying and shaking. And as soon as Hadley walks in, she like gets up and starts wagging her tail and pretending like she's okay, which just broke me even more. 
And so we talked to Hadley. She knew that Hiccup had been sick. And so we said, you know, Hiccup's been feeling really sick and she's not getting it, going to get better and, and she's going to die. And so we're here to say goodbye to her. And, you know, Hadley's little face was just, oh, oh. And I said, but you know, Hiccup will always be in our hearts, which is, you know, a thing we always say, this kind of stuff. And Hadley immediately just goes, oh, in my heart with Jesus and with Grandpa Billy. And somehow she took this entire text from John 14 and just boiled it down into this like simple little toddler understanding that, you know, Jesus is in her and all of those that we love, that we miss are there with Jesus, with us. And um, I just kept thinking, oh, out of the mouths of babes, <laughs> like, and um, so this year, as I hear this John text, it suddenly clicks in a way for me, in that same way that it clicked for Hadley in the veterinary office. And this idea that no matter what, whatever we might be going through, whatever we might be missing or grieving or worried about, that Jesus is with us, even if not physically present, which um, right now is a big difficulty for a lot of us, not being physically present with one another. Um, I know it, it hurts my heart not to be able to hug and like pat on shoulders and shake hands and all of the things that we got so used to doing with one another, but even just being in the same space together. Um, so what I really appreciate about this today is the way in which Jesus reminds us that it's not just about the physical presence, but it's also about the spirit, about the presence in our hearts in ourselves, the way in which we are also in Jesus, the way in which God, our creator, the one who created everything, this uh, once hidden God, as Paul describes in our Acts reading this morning, are all part of us and we are all part of our Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I am so grateful for that message today because honestly, we are now two months, it has been eight weeks that we have been online for our Sunday worship, um, which is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be when this all first began. And it looks like it'll probably be a lot longer. And as we are facing, you know, the realities that this is going to take longer than we wanted or expected, that we're beginning to face, that even once we do come together again, it's going to look very different and a lot of that physical presence stuff that we're used to is not going to be doable. We're not going to be able to hug one another or sit next to one another or be close together and we're also even learning that singing communally is one of the most dangerous ways to spread this virus. And so the recommendations coming out of the World Health Organization and our church-wide denomination and other denominations and councils of churches is not to sing together if we're in person. And all of that leaves me feeling confused and brokenhearted and worried unable to really imagine what will be next. And Jesus reminds us to keep his commandments, his commandments to love God and to love our neighbor. And these days, loving our neighbor still looks like our service opportunities, like donating for go bags or helping with the fish food pantry, which we were just able to host on May 8th. It also looks like staying home and staying safe and helping lower the spread of this disease. It also looks like wearing a mask because it tells other people around you that you care for them. It looks like washing our hands and then putting a lot of lotion on. It looks like quarantine haircuts, which mine's already starting to grow out. I'm gonna need to have Greg do some trimming for me soon. 
loving God right now looks like prayers out in our gardens. It looks like time on Zoom or on Facebook, watching and then participating in worship. It looks like finding beautiful praise songs to listen to, to fill our homes with, so that way we can sing on our own. And for me, it's sitting in my office with my microphone on mute during our worship time and singing loudly abide with me because or abide in me because that is one of my favorite all-time hymns and so i don't know if you saw me in my little corner but i i'm alone so i can sing to myself and sing to our god and i think that whether we're feeling alone or anxious or frustrated or bored or worried or just ready for this to be over, in all of this, Jesus reminds us today that at the core of his message, at the core of our Trinitarian God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, at the core of all of this is love. The core is love. The love that goes to the cross for us, that suffers and endures the worst of this world for you and for me. The love that moves past fear and death and brings a new life. That as Jesus lives, we live too. This love in Jesus, in the Father, in the Holy Spirit that is in me and in you and in all of us together, gathered by the Holy Spirit into one body of Christ together. This is the love that calls us to share in grace and peace and to find hope and comfort and to find moments of joy during this time moments of connection, moments of that Spirit's presence in our hearts, remembering that no matter what, whether we realize it or not, Jesus is there in us, through us, and all around us. Thanks be to God. Amen.
God has made us new people through our baptism into Christ and our response of faith. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we pray for all of those in need. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the creation that you have given to us, for light and love and grace in our world, for the breath of life in your Holy Spirit in and around us. Lord, in, our mer in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our mercy. prayer. You call all people the world of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. And God, this week we lift up Ahmad Avery and Brianna Thompson who lost their lives too soon to racial injustice in our world. Lord, may your justice roll down like waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. You come near to us when we are lost and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer any way, for those who are dealing with financial, emotional, or physical stress during this time, for those who are essential workers and those returning to work, for the Taco family, the Zimmerman family, for Ray Davenport and Krista Croy, for the Milheiser family, the Custer family, for Alicia Gates, for Butch Alexander, for the Arnitz family, for Barb Claussen, for the Yaki family, for Sharon Ann, for the Peterson family, for Amy Thibodeau, and for the Olympic family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your commands, Lord, are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice advocate for the voiceless and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Help us to love you and love our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, I invite the congregation gathered by the Holy Spirit, gathered through technology, to share your prayers. You may speak them silently or aloud to yourself. You may comment them in our Facebook or YouTube feeds. You may share them with me privately after our worship is over. At this time, for what do the people of God pray for today? For all these prayers offered, Lord, we lift them to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
You remain with us always, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. We lift our voices, our hands, our lives up to our Lord in response to the generous gifts God shares with us. Each week, we share our gifts for ministry and our offering. To continue with your offering, checks may be mailed to the church office. You can also give electronically. Visit bethanylongview.org slash coronavirus for links to give online or via the Give Plus app. We give thanks for the gifts God shares with us. We give thanks for the abundant life God brings us. And we give thanks for you.
Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name and the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. On the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he was gathered with his disciples. He took bread, broke it, blessed it, and gave it to them to drink, saying, take and give it to them to eat, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, he blessed it, and he gave it to them to drink, saying, take and drink all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the love and mercy given to us through Jesus. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Alleluia. I invite you to pray with me the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. We have it here today on your screen in the more traditional version, if you prefer the more contemporary version, if you prefer to just listen. We invite you now to join us with the communion of the saints as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the Lord's table. You do not need to be a member of our church or our denomination to commune with us virtually. We invite you during this time to feel the Spirit's presence and join the entire body of Christ together. You may use bread or wine or juice in your home. You may give to one another or listen to the voice, my voice, saying, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. You may also choose to fast from communion today and hear this blessing. You belong to God. You are loved. You are not alone. Amen. Come to the banquet. Behold the risen Christ.
life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Ooh, before we do that, we have our closing song. announcements before we close out our worship today. If you are on our Zoom call, I invite you to stay on for some fellowship time after our worship concludes. Also, uh, we have been doing a celebratory uh, saying happy birthday and happy anniversary to those who are having birthdays and anniversaries between today and our following Sunday. And this week we don't have any, but we do have an anniversary for Evelyn and Larry coming up on Sunday, May 24th. So we'll get to celebrate again for you guys, but I hope you have a wonderful Sunday next week. 
A few quick announcements. Uh, you can find those announcements online at bethanylongview.org slash announcements. The main thing that is incorrect on the screen that you're looking at right now is that Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. we will be having table catechism. And so that will be uh, a time where we gather together on Zoom with our dinners and our drinks and we talk about faith and our tradition and all kinds of things together. And so I hope that you will uh, join us for that on Zoom on Tuesday night at 5.30. The last one we did in April was such a great conversation and I anticipate it being another wonderful one. So add it to your calendar, write it in on uh, wherever you keep your usual announcements, Tuesday at 5.30. Other than that, things are kind of back to our usual weekly routine. And so Women's Bible Study will be meeting via Zoom, breakfast group calling one another at 8 o'clock on Tuesday. The Moms of Young Children Book Club and Small Seeds and Sprouts will be meeting on Wednesday again. And we will continue with our Stretch and Pray evening worship service. The Zoom call opens at 5.30 for fellowship and then 6 o'clock worship begins. And we still invite you on Thursdays to make phone calls for uh, the duct tape crew as well. One other thing that's not on this is that if you're a member of our church, you would have gotten a letter in the mail that we are holding a special congregational meeting on Zoom on next Sunday, May 24th at noon to uh, vote on giving our council the authority to apply for a payroll protection program grant if necessary. So this wouldn't be actually applying for the grant, but just giving our council the authority to be able to apply if we need it if there's another round of those grants going out. And so I really hope that you will join us either by phone or on your computer or tablet or other smart device on Sunday at noon for that call. So that way we can get that vote in and give our council um, what they need so they can continue to move forward with all of this. Also this week, not on the calendar, but our uh, reopening subcommittee that council put together, which will in, which includes someone from duct tape, two members of council, and someone from worship and music will be meeting also on this Zoom. Week, not on the calendar, oh, but it looks like someone is on the yeah, yeah. so go. Gotcha. You're good. Oh, it's Audrey and Gil. Hello. Um, I'm so excited to see you, but what I was going to say was uh, our reopening subcommittee will begin meeting this week as we begin to uh, research and put together resources of what reopening will look like for us when um, we hit the correct phase in um, our state. So I hope that you will keep that subcommittee in your prayers this week as well during all of this. And I think that might be all of the announcements I have. And so with that, Christ is risen, just as he said, go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. God bless you all this week. I pray that we see you throughout the week and see you again soon. Bye-bye.